G'day guys, today I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux 2016 version. So you're going to want to download Kali, which you can download from kali.org. And there's a little button called Downloads, you go to Download Kali Linux, and there's a bunch of different versions, pick whichever one's best fit for you. And it comes in ISO or ISO in the torrent. And you can also get this ARM image. And that's the image if you want to install it on a Raspberry Pi or a Galaxy or anything else that uses an ARM processor. So I've already done that, like downloaded it. So if we go new, this is using Hyper-V. So I'll go new virtual machine. Next, I'm going to call it Kali 2016. You can choose your own custom folder if you want to keep it somewhere else. Choose your generation. I'm just going to use generation 1. Sign memory and give it 4 gig of RAM. Configure networking. Pick your switch. Create this virtual machine in this. I'm just going to use a 60 gig hard drive. And you want to pick your bootable ISO image file. So browse to where you've downloaded it to. There's mine. Hit open. And next. And then it gives you a little summary of what will happen. Finish. So I also want it to have extra processes. So I'm going to go to the settings. And give it four virtual processes. And I'm also going to give it minimum RAM of 2048. 2 gig of RAM. and hit OK. So then, when you start the virtual machine, it will boot to here. So, we want to go to graphical install. There's also a live version if you want to just use it live, which you can just boot from the CD or a USB drive that has it there. Oh, what happened then? Oh no, it's working. So, Pick your language, hit continue, and then you can choose your country. I'm in Australia, so I'm going to choose Australia. And you get to pick your um, language. I'm going to use British English. And then it will start downloading and installing everything. So now you can give it a name. I'm just going to leave it as Carly. Domain name, if you want it to be part of a domain name. Uh, just continue. I don't want it joined to a domain. And then the root password. So I'm just going to give it a root password. Got to make sure that they both match. Then you get to pick where you are. I'm in Victoria. So now you can choose your partition. If you want to use LVM, you can use that. If you want to use the entire disk, you can use that, or you can choose your own. I'm just going to let it use the entire disk. And you get to pick your disk. So as you see, 64.4 gig there. And then you can separate the partitions. I'm just going to leave it as default, just because it's easy. But you can also put your home directory on a different partition. This means if your operating system dies, all of the stuff that you have saved in your home directory is still recoverable from the other partition. Or like, you know, the operating system gets corrupt. You can recover your home directory, so your files and stuff like that, from the second partition. And then you can undo the changes or finish. So I'm just going to finish. And you want to write the changes.
and then it's going to install the system. So, so this is asking you if you want to use a network mirror. I'm just going to say no. Ask you if you want a proxy. If you want a proxy, you can enter in your proxy details. If you don't, you don't have to. So the next thing that comes up is if you in, want to install the Grub boot loader. So if you're installing it on a new machine or a virtual machine, you probably want to install it. Um, it gives you a little thing here that it should be safe to install the Grub boot loader on the MBR of your first hard drive, blah, blah, blah. If it doesn't detect any other operating systems and you install the Grub bootloader, it could break your other operating systems. Like say you wanted to do dual boot with Windows, installing the Grub bootloader, if it doesn't detect that there's another operating system on there, will break Windows. You will not be able to boot into Windows. So for this thing, I'm going to say yes, I want to install it because it's just a VM and I just want to do it. And you pick your drive that you want to install the bootloader onto then hit next. Now you see it's booted to the Grub bootloader. And if you don't change your setting, it'll just automatically boot to the first available operating system, which is Kali Linux in this case. So now it's going to ask you for your username, which will be root. And you need to make sure you remember the password that you set before and type it in. So now, as you see, we have the booted version of Kali Linux. So anyway, that was how to install Kali Linux 2016 version. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos. There's also a Kali Linux playlist on my channel if you want to take a look and see more different things that you can do with Kali. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon.